Morning, it's that kind of morning. Praise the Lord. Bring full feeling. Glory to His name. It's that kind of morning.
in the wrong. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. It's that kind of morning. Jump start. Hallelujah. We jump start this morning. Alibi. Hallelujah. All right. Reaching out. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Reaching out to the great one, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has anointed us and appointed us. Yes. This one is Marvia Providence. I am anointed that kind of morning, celebrating the goodness of God. That kind of morning. Hey, and if you're under the blood, hey, Holy Ghost, shout. Stomp them under the blood. Hey, we're under the blood. Thank you, Felicia. Feliz. Under the blood. Under the blood. Hey, I am anointed. Hey, pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Hey, you can't sing this one once. Anointed by the great one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing this morning, your fresh oil that you are pouring on our heads even now. Thank you, Lord, that we woke up to new mercies. Hallelujah. We are anointed with new mercies this morning. Holy Ghost, shout. Feet are anointed. And if you're under the blood, Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. I am anointed. Putting the enemy under my feet. I am anointed. No more defeat. No turning back. Yes. Taking back what is stolen from me. I am anointed and appointed. I'm a worry. Hey, somebody said pull up. All right. You get it, Carla. You get it. That kind of morning. Hey, we are anointed and appointed. Hallelujah. Anointed people of God. Hallelujah. God's stretching instruments to tear down. He has anointed us. Hallelujah. Hey, powerful people, hallelujah, and our God, hallelujah, so I fit, and we are celebrating his goodness this morning. Hey, hey. Where the soldiers them day? Six to four, five, yes, soldiers, line up, salute, hey, hey, hey. Something under the blood. Give me a holy ghost shout. If your feet are anointed, and if you're under the blood, give me a holy ghost shout. Feet are anointed. And if you're under the blood, 
I am anointed. Hey. Hallelujah. God can't go on him and tell you. <laughs> no sleepiness this morning. Not even our own. We celebrate the goodness of God. Hallelujah. We celebrate his sovereignty this morning. We celebrate his awesomeness this morning. We celebrate his mindfulness this morning. What is man that he is so mindful of us that he says, I am going to make you a little lower than the angels. And then he says, I am going to give you all of these things. I have anointed you to take care of all that I have created. So we are God's caretaker. Who are we that is so mindful of us? And Lord, we thank you. Irrespective of how we have been, why we have been, where we have been, God did not change his mind concerning you. Hallelujah. And Lord, we just thank you this morning. Morning. We praise you, we honor you, we adore you, for you are great, you are awesome, you are mighty, you are true, you are faithful, you are on your love, hallelujah, reaches beyond boundaries and borders, hallelujah, your love reaches beyond what we are, who we are, oh we are, hey, God is amazing. God's love is amazing. Listen, yesterday I was watching a, pro, a, a, a church service and the prophet called out a man's name and the prophet said, um, like they call out the man's name and the prophet said, I see... I see death over you and tonight is not a prophetic night but when God calls out you when I, somebody is flowing and God calls you out you know that God wants to do something right now and the man came up and the man gave his life to the Lord unprovoked on the man just gave his life to the Lord and then the man started to testify and the man said just last week they 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 um shut up his car and 20 shots the car with some high powered rifle and guys guess what he came out with one i don't know if it was grazer or what he pulled on his clothes and he showed them what happened to him last week and persons were just in awe because they can't imagine based on what they saw how he escaped that onslaught and i'm telling you that man is marked for greatness and god hid him in the cleft of the rock god chased him down god intercepted god stood before god stood before him and god did a mighty move angels were dispatched and God sent, yes, Fiore, wow. I said, wow, too. I said, the, 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 the pastor was so in awe. The pastor said, I know you. Did I plan anything with you? The lady who invited him to church said, said did I know that he was God? Listen, that was God in his splendor. God loved that guy so much. God wants to use him so much. God chasing him down. And even before, between last week Wednesday and last night, he didn't give his, uh, and, and before the, the, the pastor called out his name, he didn't give his life to the Lord. And God says, I am not going to, I am giving you a chance to come fully under my canopy. And he gave his life to the Lord last night and he got baptized. And I celebrate God this morning for the 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 the, 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 the way He chastened. You know, some people um talk about the song. There's a song that talks about God's love that he, they use it figuratively. It's reckless. That's an example of reckless love, going before, behind, beside whatever, whoever. It doesn't matter who. And God went there, man. And God shield, shield him. Yes, he got just one little graze or something. And he said he left the hospital the same day. So that shows you that it wasn't 
calm, anything serious, and God has kept him. Hallelujah. What a love. What a love. That song, this song come to me when I say, what a love. Oh, what a love. The long time. So, hey, that song, they're nice, you know, man. Oh, what a love. The, hey, let me see. My God has given me. Mm -hmm. I love when he says that. God has given me. I got to be dream. Hey, that guy there must be singing this song. I got to be dreaming. Hallelujah. We celebrate God in all his splendor this morning. The great I am that I am. The one who's love. Just leave us with a woe. The love with a woe. Oh, what a love. You have to sing up in your nostrils with this one, you know. Given me. Um, mm. He gave us a love with an endless guarantee. Hallelujah. Mm. To save a wretch like me on Calvary in agony. It, oh, yes. Oh, what a love. I've got to be dreaming. Hallelujah. Oh, what a love. And if I'm really dreaming, then I want to dream the rest of my life. I've got to be dreaming about the love like this. And if I'm really dreaming, then I want to dream the rest of my life. Hallelujah. Jesus. Mm. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. Mm. In heaven. Hey. Hey. Sins away. About a love like this, I listen. Hallelujah. Wanna dream the rest of my life? I've got to be dreaming about a love like this. Hallelujah. Hold this but good is shot. Rest of my life. Yes, this is a oldies but goodies, but relevant. Years, years, I don't even know how old this song is. Maybe older than me. But he knew about that love, that consistent love, that same love that I was born in 1978 and experienced. And the same love that somebody who is born in 1990 experienced. And the same love that somebody who is born today will experience. That consistent love that never fails and never changes. And it doesn't matter which circumstance and how we were born. The love remains. Hallelujah. His love remains. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, Lord. We give you praise and we give you glory. Hallelujah. Today, take full control. All of you, none of us. Hallelujah. We have a special guest this morning. And I thank you, Father, that you have chosen her for such a time as this. Take our tongues. Teach us exactly. Exactly what we need to say in this hour in the mighty name of Jesus take all father God and we pray even now mighty God that your hand hallelujah rest remain and abide with Israel in the mighty name of Jesus the peace of Israel mighty God is forefront hallelujah the peace of Jerusalem in the mighty name of Jesus peace in Haiti hallelujah peace in South Africa peace oh God across the nations of Europe, hallelujah, that have experienced such um, devastating flooding. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for your hand that is upon them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Ah, God, and I thank you, Lord, that now that I'm about to add this person, that it will work smoothly in the name of Jesus. I decree it, I declare it, and it must be so in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm inviting um, somebody will be coming on right now. You will see who it is when they come on. And it will work. Will work. You will work. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are God. Hey, hey, good morning. It's dawning. Yes, Auntie Pat will speak to us this morning. Get ready, get ready, because I know it's an on time word. Hallelujah. So get your pen, get your paper. Get your ears in order because God has a word for us this morning. I must tell you, it's from um, Wednesday now to pop up in my head. And I said, Auntie Pat, you want to present tomorrow because I knew I was going to present tomorrow, but God wouldn't have it for, for yesterday. He did what he did yesterday. So today is the day. Let me get my pen. Let me make sure me get my book and my pen because I'm not meeting. <laughs> so we give God thanks for what is already done in the mighty name of jesus and we will not leave this environment the same way we came in jesus name hallelujah welcome Auntie Pat. good morning and good morning to everybody we never said morning and on behalf of ron wade and marsha wade saying boy what a morning god is good bless you all right Auntie Pat, go ahead good morning pastor marsha good morning fourth watch family Good morning, good morning. Let me tell you something. God can go on, you see? <laughs> God can really go on. Marsha, you would never believe it. I just got off my prayer line from church and I was sharing with them that this morning I woke up with a song in my spirit. I've played this song so many times since morning. Mm -hmm. It's a song by Corey Ashby. Um, sorry, Ash Asbury. And it is a song which is sung very often by South Florida's best praise and worship team, Harvest Fire Worship Center praise and worship <laughs> team. And the song talks about the reckless love of God. Yes. The reckless love of God. When I heard you actually use that <laughs> word and talk about the wreck, I said, God, you can't go on me. <laughs> what he said, this, the word, the song said, before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so good, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathe your life in me. You have been so kind to me. Mm -hmm. And the bridge says, all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down fights till i'm found leaves the 99 then he mm. said i couldn't earn it i don't deserve it still mm. you give yourself away all oh, the overwhelming never ending reckless love of god and what i really like the one part i really like is there's no shadow you won't light up no mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you mm. won't kick down no lie you won't tear down coming after me oh the reckless hallelujah and so father this morning we thank you for your reckless love we thank you lord god that you love us unashamedly that your love for us as your woman servant reminded us last night is transparent it is clear it is consistent it is unchangeable we thank you thank you for loving us lord god even though we don't deserve it you are still willing and you are still able to climb every mountain to kick down walls to tear down lies to show us how much you love us and as we come this morning with this knowledge that you love us we open our hearts 
to hear your word. For Lord God, because you love us, you chastise us. Mm -hmm. And so even though this may be a harsh word, it's only because you love us. And so we thank you for reminding us of your reckless love for us. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning again. Um, Pastor Marsha and Pastor Rohan, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. One which you know, it's only because I really, really love you. No, it's because I love God. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I do have a word that I want to share this morning, and I do believe that it is a word from God. And how many of us know that our parents don't always sugarcoat us, but because they love us, they mm -hmm. will chastise us and they will be kind to us and because they want the very best out of us yeah. so i want to speak to us this morning from first corinthians chapter 10 verse 10 and it says neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed by the destroyer mm. And so this morning, I want to speak to us about that spirit of murmuring. Now, to murmur is to utter sounds or words in a low, almost inaudible tone, as in expressing affection or dissatisfaction. And Webster actually, Webster's Dictionary actually defines the word as a half suppressed or muttered complaint or grumbling mm -hmm. it is a low indistinct but often continuous sound so there is a murmur of voices or the murmur of the waves along the shore and this word also is used as a medical term which refers to an atypical sound of the heart, typically mm -hmm. indicating a functional or structural abnormality. And even now, even now, thank you, Holy Spirit. Even now, I speak to every heart condition. Everyone on this line, everyone who will listen to this afterwards everyone who will hear this word who has gotten a report from the doctor about a heart murmur <laughs> a dysfunctional and abnormality in their heart we speak to it right now in the mighty name of Hallelujah. jesus christ yes, i speak normality to to every heart every physical heart i command them to line up and to function in the perfection with which god has 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 created them to function even now and if that is you just place your hand on your heart and say thank you lord thank you lord Hallelujah. it is done in the mighty name of jesus christ amen and amen so paul here in writing to the Corinthians, he was warning them. He was saying to them, listen, man, I want you all to learn from the experience of the Israelites. Don't bother too much with the murmuring thing because those Israelites, they murmured so much. And as a result, they did not make it into the promised land. Mm -hmm. As a result, they were destroyed. Some of the words that are associated with the word mur murmuring as used in this context are complaining, ouch, fault finding, ouch, arguing, ouch, insinuations, griping, accusations, judging others, and yes, gossiping. Mm. Murmuring is a negative confession, 
based on dissatisfaction or discontentment. Wow. Now, let me say that again. Murmuring, for those of you who are taking notes, murmuring is a negative confession based on dissatisfaction or discontentment. Now, unfortunately, this has become so much a part of our lifestyle that we often don't even know how, know that we are doing it. And can I confess to you how in the past couple of days I've been thinking about this and I realized how many times I've opened my mouth to complain? Lord, me tired. Lord, we can't take this no more. Lord, and we go on and we do it without even thinking about it. Pastor, it has become so much a part of our life. Yes. And let's just pause and think how easy it is to complain about others and to find fault with others. How often we are quick to make judgments just by what we see yes it is unconscious it is something that we do so unconsciously because it has become a part of our life we so often forget that death and life is in the power of the tongue now the practice of murmuring is nothing new it has been going on for a long time as far back as Exodus chapter 14, we see that the we saw the children of God murmuring out of discontentment. Verse 11 says, and they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Hold on, hold on. Here are these people who were enslaved for many years. Here are these people who the Pharaoh was afflicting them to the point that he, he, he wanted them to make bricks without straw. Here are these people who were in bondage for a long time, and then God sent deliverance to them through his servant Moses, mm -hmm. and how quickly they forgot. Turn around on Moses. Man, you should have allowed us to stay in Egypt and die. Were there no graves in Egypt? Why are you carrying us to die in the wilderness? They complain. But before we, before we say how ungrateful they are, let's think about ourselves. Mm -hmm. How soon have we, how often have we soon forgotten that someone has done something for us? And the one time they can't do it, how we complain. Mm -hmm. Come on, wives, let's be honest with ourselves. How many times our husbands have done so much for us and the one time they can't, you never. And husbands, you do the same thing too. You always busy. You never have any time for me. The one time. <laughs> the one time, Pastor. <laughs> Lord, Antipat, I'm not going to make up my face like Ron the last time. <laughs> <laughs> we do it. We all do it. We murmur and we complain. As soon as things are not going our way, then we forget everything that God has done for us. We forget everything that someone has done for us and we start to complain. And I thought about it. And there's an old song, boy, Pastor Masha, you bought some oldies on us this morning. <laughs> but there was, there's an old song that says, roll back the curtains of memories now and then. Show us where you brought us from and where we could have been. Remember, we're humans and humans forget. So remind us, remind, remind us, dear Lord. 
This is the prayer that we need to con be constantly praying. This is the prayer that I know I need to be constantly praying because I am so prone to forget the things that God has done for me. I am so prone to forget the reckless love of God. I am so prone to forget the many mountains that he has leveled yes. just for me. I am so prone to forget the walls that he has kicked down and allowed me to walk through them. The minute he tells me to wait, I forget all that he has done before mm -hmm. roll back the curtains of memory hallelujah show us lord where you brought us from and where we could have been for indeed lord god as humans we are prone to forget so this morning as a family our prayer is that you will remind us mm -hmm. remind us dear lord Amen. Now, what causes murmuring? Hmm. Lord of mercy. Selfishness. Mm -hmm. Anger. Let me tell you something. I got angry this week at a family member. And I murmured and I murmured and I complained so much that the night when I lay down in my bed and the Lord did a replay, I was ashamed. Mm. Mark, you know, he really, really gave me cause to be upset. But I tell you, I murmured, I complained, anybody could listen. I would, I complained about the young man, I complained about the young man, I complained, I murmured. And I had to say, Lord, forgive me. I couldn't go to sleep, Pastor Marsha, without mm -hmm. repenting. And so the next day he did something again. And I said to myself, you know what? I am not going to do it another night. So let me just zip up and let me just use this energy, this negative energy, channel it into doing something positive. Mm -hmm. So I started to put on a piece of cleaning. And I, I, yes, I channeled the negative energy because I did not want to get back there. But anger, when we get angry then we complain we complain and we murmur because we are jealous we complain and we murmur because we're envious we mm -hmm. complain and we murmur because we are greedy we complain and we murmur because we are walking in unforgiveness we complain and we murmur because we are bitter in short we complain and we murmur because we are walking in sin. Because of sin, we complain and we murmur. Jude 1, 16a says, These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust. Mm -hmm. Walking after their own lust. So when we complain and when we murmur, let's think about it. Are we in God's will or are mm -hmm. we complaining and murmuring because we are not getting our way? Are we complaining and murmuring because we thought, we felt that God should answer our prayer this way, but he chose to answer it that way. Are we walking after our own loss? Now, like everything else, murmuring has consequences. And so what are the effects of murmuring? Numbers chapter 11, verse 1 says, And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard them, and his anger 
was kindled. Murmuring displeases God. Mm -hmm. When we murmur, when we complain, God is not pleased. God is not happy with us. Now, it is important to note in this passage um, that I referred to, Pastor Marsha, in Numbers 11, Moses didn't hear the murmuring of the people at that point in time, you know. Mm -hmm. They were murmuring behind his back. Moses did not hear the murmuring, but guess what? God heard it. Mm -hmm. Now, when I murmur and I complain about my husband, Good morning, Mr. A.G. <laughs> when, we, when I murmur and I complain, Aston may not hear what God hears. Yeah. When we murmur and we complain about our pastor, boy, pastor preached too long. Pastor never had no time for me. Pastor, pastor don't hear, but God hears. Mm -hmm. And what does it do to him? It displeases him. It mm -hmm. hurts his heart. You see, God knows the secret murmurings of our hearts. Mm -hmm. He hears every complaint. We, mur we murmur under our, our breaths. Mm -hmm. And according to Numbers 11 verse 1, it displeases him. Mm -hmm. No, it displeased him so much when the children of Israel murmured that fire. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God is not going to call literal fire on us, but God is going to cause us to suffer because of our murmurings and our complaining. May God help us this morning. Hallelujah. The second consequence of murmuring is that we are not able to manifest the fruit of the spirit now those of us who are christians we are called to manifest the fruit of the spirit people around us should see the love the joy the peace the happiness the fruit of the spirit now tell me the very things that cause us to murmur, the selfishness, the jealousy, the unforgiveness, the anger, those things are counteractive to the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we are doing these things, then there is no way we are able to manifest the fruit of the spirit. Think about it. We are the only Bible some people read. And if every day I sit next door, to someone in my office and all they hear me do is complain. Boy, the boss just give me all the hard assignments. Boy, life hard. Boy, me can't take me husband. Boy, and we complain and we murmur. Now, what messages are we sending the unbeliever who is sitting next to us? Mm. what messages mm -hmm. we are not able to manifest the fruit of the spirit when we continuously complain and murmur against god murmur against our bosses murmur against our pastors murmur against our husband murmur about our children let me tell you my grandbabies two of my grandbabies have been with us for the past two or three weeks and man if you are not careful you spend all your time complaining why you didn't do this you never picked up that why is it and it got, it has gotten to me where i'm like okay really <laughs> no we, we we have to be honest about it because it has become such a way of life for us that we do not do we didn't do not even recognize that we are doing it we mm -hmm. we complain so often and about everything that we don't know and because of that we 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 have we show we are not able to display the joy and the peace 
and the contentment that Galatians 5 talks about, the fruit of the Spirit. Because instead, we are manifesting the loss, the things that are associated with murmuring. May God help us. Amen. The third thing that murmuring does is that it causes us to become unthankful and negative. And believe it or not, we become repulsive to others. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you something. My husband had a, a family member that it was just so hard to take up the phone and call this person because no matter what happened it was just negative if the rain was falling the rain of fall if the sun was shining the sun too hot it <laughs> was, <laughs> it was, if you call you, look how long you don't call me it, it it's just so negative i am sure some of us have some of those people in our lives you, you, you're almost scared to call them because they have become repulsive because they murmur and they mm -hmm. complain about everything, everything. There is absolutely nothing that anyone can do to please these people. And so when we murmur, we become unthankful we do not see the half full glass mm -hmm. we see the half empty glass pastor marcia in everything mm -hmm. every situation we see the bad in it instead of the good we do not know how it is what it means to, to the, for God to turn things around for our good because we ah. are just so busy complaining and looking at the negative aspect of things. And soon people don't want to be around us. I don't want to be around a negative person because it saps my energy. Mm -hmm. It saps your energy. And after a while, you know what? People start saying, boy, I don't like, I can't even bother hang out with, with the one Pat Goldson. She's too negative. This morning, Pastor Marsha came on. She was vibey. She was happy. She was excited. And, and, and some of us probably still felt a little sleepy. But Pastor Marsha just vibes and, and, and the vibes just catch in. Now, if Pastor Marsha came on this morning, boy, me tired of this year. Every morning, me from wake up, me, me, and this morning, me, I'm me so tired. Me just want to sleep. So many of us would have just logged off. Mm -hmm. It's catching, and so I want us to check ourselves. Are we complainers? Are we murmurers? Mm -hmm. Are we negative people? Are we sapping people's energy? Or when we go around them, are we actually releasing life? Mm -hmm. Because that's what we are showing. Mm -hmm. Well, one very good thing I love about God and I love about the Bible is that he will show us who we are. He will show us what we are. But he also provides for us a remedy. Mm -hmm. And so God has also given us a remedy to overcome murmuring. The first thing is that I need this message. Thank you, Sister Pat. You are welcome, my dear. We all need this message. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing we need to do is to develop a thankful lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Develop a thankful lifestyle. Strategy number one. Mm -hmm. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 says, In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, before you get up on me, 
I want you to note that he didn't say for everything give thanks. Because it is so hard to give God for thanks for everything. But he says, the word says, in everything, give thanks. So mm -hmm. in the good times, in the bad times, give him thanks. Mm -hmm. Amen. If we find ourselves being thankful, then I guarantee you, we will murmur less against God, against our spouses, mm -hmm. against our bosses, mm -hmm. against our pastors, against our own children and mm -hmm. grandchildren. If we develop a thankful lifestyle, I guarantee you, that when the boss sends us an assignment which we might not necessarily like, if we say, God, I am so grateful to you that I have a job. There are so many people that do not have a job. Instead of complaining, when the grandchildren get on your nerves, instead of just murmuring and complaining, say, God, I thank you for long life. I am alive to see my grandbabies and I bless them. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that they are righteous seeds, that my children are blessed, my grandchildren are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When our husband refused to do something that they shouldn't do or our wife, instead of murmuring and complaining, let us just bless them. Father, I thank you for the godly man you have given me. I thank you for the mm -hmm. godly woman that you have given me. I thank you, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Find a reason to give him thanks. And Amen. even the doctor's report is not what we would have liked. Instead of sitting down and complaining and murmuring, God, why me? Why this has come upon me? Now we're going to say, Lord, I thank you that you are Jehovah Rophe, the one who heals. I thank you, Lord God, mm -hmm. that we will believe no other report but mm -hmm. the report of the Lord, which says I am healed. Amen. If for every reason and every situation we find a reason to give thanks, I guarantee you we will murmur less. Colossians 3.17 says, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. The second remedy is that we need to learn to be content with what we have. Amen. Philippians 4, 11, Paul says, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Now, one of the reasons why we murmur so much sometimes, we, it's because of envy, jealousy, bad mind. You look at someone else and you complain. Oh God, I serve you every day. I live for you every day. Such and such a person don't even acknowledge you and you are blessing them. And, 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 mm -hmm. and I am not being blessed. Lord, that person's children is, is progressing so well. And my mm -hmm. children are not. Lord, that person have a big heart. Lord, that, uh, Lord, and we keep on comparing mm -hmm. ourselves with others. Mm -hmm. Then we end up murmuring and complaining. Let us learn to be content with what we have. In fact, Pastor Marsha, I have found out that when we are happy for others, when we rejoice with others, when we thank God for what he has done for others, then without even asking God for the same things, he grants them unto us. So let's learn to be content with what we have. The, 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 yes, Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes we do not have things because God knows we're not ready for it. We yes. can't handle it. Mm -hmm. We cannot handle it. And so we spend time and murmur and complain for what we don't have. But let's learn to be content and to manage that which we have. And then we will see how God will elevate us 
and give us what he knows we are ready for. The third strategy is to think on positive things. Mm -hmm. Think on positive things. So the first thing you're going to do is develop a thankful lifestyle. Secondly, be content with what you have. Thirdly, think on positive things. Philippians 4 verse 8 says, Whatever things are true, honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. And so the songwriter says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, hey. and what he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. When we think of all the good things that God has done for us, the things, the way God has blessed us, I guarantee you, we will murmur less. We will yes. complain less. When we sit back, I don't know, I like to journal. And so if we ever take, I have a gratitude journal, many, many gratitude journals. But if we practice to daily, just take a book and just write, just thank God. It's amazing. We didn't even realize. And these are the things that we know about. Because God has done so many things for us that we don't even know about. We don't know how many times he saved us from that accident. He, we don't know how many times he opened doors for us that we were just able to walk in. We don't know. But if we are willing to just think about the things that God has done for us, then instead of complaining and murmuring, our souls will cry out, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Strategy number five, meditate on the word daily. And that's the last one I'm giving you, Psalm 1, 2. That's In number four, Antipas. Sorry, number four. Lux, my bishop would have said you can't count. Number <laughs> four, meditate on the word daily. Psalm 1, 2 refers to the righteous man. It says his delight is in the law of the Lord and mm -hmm. in his law doth he meditate night mm -hmm. and day. Amen. Meditate on the word of God. You see, when we get into the word, the word reminds us of who we are. The word reminds us of whose we are. It reminds us of what God has done for us, what God has promised that he will do for us. It reminds us that God is a promise-keeping God. It reminds us that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly, much more than we can think, much more than we can even ask. If we meditate on the word, we will spend less time murmuring and complaining about what's happening in our daily lives. Remember Job? That man called Job? <laughs> he was going through all these things. He lost his children. He lost all his possessions, everything in quick succession. Yet in chapter 23, verse 12, Job says, I have esteemed his word more than my necessary food. I submit that one of the reasons why we murmur and we complain the way we do is that we do not spend enough time meditating on the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because Job spent so much time, he felt the word of God was much more important even than the food he was eating. Mm -hmm. As a result, when his wife encouraged him to curse God and die, he remained steadfast in his faith. And instead of complaining, he was able to say, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. I did say that that was my final point, but I also said it was number five when it was number four. So number five, mm -hmm. trust the Holy Spirit to guide us. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding in all, not some, in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. We are living in trying times. We're living in unprecedented times. We're living in a time that we have never seen before. One like none that no one is alive knows about. And so it's easy for us to murmur and to complain because we know not what the future holds because there are so many strange things happening around us. But let us learn to lean on God let us learn to trust the Holy Spirit to direct our path and to lead us wherever he wants to go. Let us learn to lean on the one who is all knowing, the one who is all powerful, the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, much more than we can ask or even think. So in closing, I want to remind us that murmuring is a negative confession based on discontent and dissatisfaction. Instead of murmuring, let us speak life instead of death. Let us strive to utter only positive confessions in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The next time we open our mouths to murmur, the next time we open our mouths to complain, just remember, the power of our words. There is death and there is life in the power of the tongue. Won't you speak life? Let's pray. Father, we Amen. thank you again for this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the reminders that you have sent us. We confess, Lord God, that we are murmurers. We confess that we are complainers. And so we ask God that you will forgive us. Forgive us for the negative words we have spoken over our marriages, the negative words we have spoken over our children, the negative words we have spoken over our leaders, over our pastors, the negative words we have spoken over each other. Forgive us, we pray. Yes, Lord. Lord God, we pray that you will renew our minds. We decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we have the mind of Christ. And because of that, we will think on the things that are lovely, the things that are honest, the things that are pure, the things that are of good report. We pray, Lord God, that you will teach us how to meditate upon your word night and day, that your word, Lord God, we may learn how to esteem your word more than our necessary food in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord God, that we will develop an attitude, develop, Lord God, a, a, a liking for your word that we will practice dwelling in your presence in the secret place of the most high so that we can abide under the shadow of the almighty and now lord god Hallelujah. we thank you for even now teaching us how to be content with what we have we thank you, Lord God, for giving us a thankful spirit, an attitude of gratitude. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 God bless you. Yes, thank you so much. Don't, don't log off. Just stay on. What a word this morning. Ah, that's a full stop right there. Thank you, Lord, for exposing my heart this morning. You know? When you're asking the Lord, Lord, show my heart, show me if I'm a bad man. People don't understand that murmuring is a representation of bad mind. And it's not bad mind because you're jealous over somebody thinks bad mind because your thought process is not right. And I say, God, show me my heart, show me my heart. And in every single way, he will come and show 
your your heart, expose your heart. And um, it is as, as Antipat said, it's a default, but it's like we are so cultured to complain. It's like if everything is going good, just look for what is not going good and find that as the point to elevate. And God is saying to us in this month of one. Listen, I have I have died so that you might have life more abundantly. And with the murmuring thing, the life more abundantly is not manifesting how I want it to. Or, or it should be happening in your life. So Antipat, thank you for obeying the Lord. It is out of God's love, guys. That is why this word has come this morning. And I am really grateful for you. Really grateful for your relationship with God. Because it is so much God in a great way that will come and um you have such a great gift of teaching it's like i would sit down and listen to your whole day you have a gift of teaching i don't know how much you use it but you are so clear it's so precise it's like there's nothing else but what you just say you are just so great at it um and explore it antipod trust me you are great at it and, and, and expressing the word in, in a way that everybody can understand it. And you're calm, and you're just, you know, good, 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 good to go how you do it. And, you know, I'm really grateful for you and grateful and thankful that you accept the charge. Not in its full extent, but you accept the charge. So we thank you, God, for this word this morning so we are just going to take our community I, I was looking for the song roll back the curtains of memory now and then i saw um um what's his name jimmy jimmy swaggart so it's pure all this but good is this morning so this is jimmy swaggart so get your communions everybody what we do every morning is in remembrance of mm. his sacrifice and if we meditate as, as as the word came today on just what god has already done for us we will complain this so father god we thank you for your body and your blood we thank you lord before we even came in existence you saw it necessary to die on the cross so that we might be saved. Lord, we thank you for every week, for every lash, for every mockery that you experienced. You oh. did it just because of your love for us. And Lord, where we have taken it for granted by complaining and murmuring oh. and finding fault and discontentment and all that manner of things that we do. Lord, we repent this morning thank you lord for exposing our hearts hallelujah and we repent and ask you for forgiveness lord i lift these emblems unto you and i pray that you will consecrate it and transform it almighty god into all of you so as we eat of your body and drink of your blood lord everything missing or broken or anything that is in us almighty god must be removed because we are now taking all of you inside of us thank you lord hallelujah for the this meal, hallelujah, of breakthrough, restoration, mighty God, transformation in Jesus' name. Eat of his body and drink of his blood. Amen. Amen. Oh, my 
Thank God has certainly reminded us this morning. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Yes. So we thank God this morning in gratitude and thankfulness. Amen. Hallelujah. That is already known and the victory is won. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you. Give you his peace. Go forth and have a thankful day. A thankful day. And everything that is out of your day is we have a wonderful weekend. Look for every single reason to be grateful. Hallelujah. And as if I talk about the gratitude journal, I have a book that I write about just some things that happen to the day that I can when I go back and I see what God did this day and that day and that day. This is to be start even one line every day, writing something that was a highlight for the day that you want to see how God has done in your life have a great weekend let me tell you let me tell you something it's amazing i go back to some of my journal my gratitude journals from 10 15 18 years ago and when i read them i am amazed i don't even remember half Mm -hmm. of those things and so it's very important that we do that and write it But let me just take a second, though, to give God thanks for my leaders, our overseers, Bishop Don Clark and his wife, Dr. Helga, and my senior pastor, Pastor Don Clark Jr. out of Harvest Fire Worship Center. I see some of my people on. Well, and so God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Please. Continue to join the Fort Watch family. You can come yeah. on on the mornings. Come join Pastor Rowan, my nephew, and his beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> dynamic, charismatic wife, <laughs> my niece, too, Pastor Martha. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I just got word that today is Marsha Rose's anniversary. Let us wish her a happy anniversary. Since we leave it, Paula, I didn't even realize. I didn't know. I didn't know. I want a love song. Happy anniversary. It's sweet. We have a sweet talk, Marsha, because we are on. We are we're done. Happy anniversary, my dear. To you and Mr. Jomo. My, my dear. dear. Uh, happy anniversary. May your love continue to. And look at my shirt. Thank you, God, for the gift of the grace of our great marriage. I didn't know it was there. Yes! So, yes, I'm a thankful antipod. <laughs> I didn't even know it was your anniversary, but I thank God for you. I thank God for your marriage and may it bloom and blossom um, to greater heights and greater depths. And may your union be um, the, this, this, this new faith become bliss, daily bliss. In the mighty name of Jesus, may you go from strength to strength, glory to glory, blessing to blessing, favor to favor. May the desires of your heart be manifest in time and in this season. Go forth and enjoy your anniversary. Bless you, bless you. This is a good so all persons who are born in the 60s, you can relate to this song. <laughs> are, the, are, the, are the 50s. Happy anniversary. Bye. If you don't follow, I'm going to play music all morning. Bye, guys. Love you. Bye, love you. Bye, love you. Happy anniversary. <laughs>